What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in my EE fundamental series where I go over anything that I think is relevant to you becoming a good electrical engineer. So we're going to be continuing on with the topic of the flyback converter. I think last video I talked about some more qualitative behavioral concepts and like key operational concepts of the flyback converter. I think I went over some major components and kind of how they acted in a system. So it gave you a good idea of like how this works um, conceptually. So the next thing I want to go into is I want to talk about some equations that electrical engineers will use when they start actually designing their flyback converter. Um, but before I talk about that, there's one really important thing that I think you should do that will really help you out, and that is smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Um, and after you do that, I think we can get right into these equations because I really think you're, you'll be ready to go after that. So the first equation I want to cover is um, listed. It's already the first one, right? It's it's V out equals V in times the term uh, times quantity in S over NP times D over one minus D. So in S in this case is the number of turns in the secondary side of the transformer, the flyback transformer. And then NP is the number of turns in the primary side of the transformer. D refers to the duty cycle, which is basically a percentage of time that the MOSFET turn, uh, spends turned on. So if that makes sense. Um, it's just a function of, like, a, it, like mathematically, it is T on over T on plus T off. Um, but like I said, conceptually, it's, it's just the amount of time that our, our MOSFET spends on. So there's um, the first note I have next to this equation is I want you to think about what happens as, as T off approaches zero. So here as T off approaches zero, um, our D value approaches one. And as D approaches one, basically this term here at the top approaches infinity for the most part, right? So think of, um, Point D equals point nine 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 nine. So that means you have like point zero 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 one at the bottom and then point nine 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 at the top. So that's like gonna give you like values of like nine hundred ninety nine 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 thousand, et cetera, et cetera. So basically as the um the less the less amount of time that the MOSFET spends off, that's gonna give you a higher voltage on your output. I hope that makes sense. And then the second part second thing I mentioned here is that notice what happens um, as our switching frequency increases we have T off decreases now I want to put a huge uh, like comment on this it is this this is the, this is the capacity for T off to decrease because you don't have to make it uh, decrease necessarily just because you have a really high switching frequency doesn't mean you necessarily have to um, have T off spend more time uh, be, be uh, less, right? Um, and what I mean by FSW, right? We're talking about the maximum switching frequency. Um, because say you're going shopping for a flyback controller, you'll actually see the maximum switching frequency of controller. And, that's, and there are a lot of other reasons why you'd pick something with a lower or higher one. But this is kind of one of the things to consider, right? Um, is is if, you're, if you need something with a really high duty cycle, then, you know, um, you might pick a controller with a really high switching frequency capability or something like that. So that's just some, that's one of the notes I wanted to make here. Um, the second important thing you need to understand is that V out needs to account for the, for the forward voltage of the output diode, as well as the output specification that you list, right? Um, so going back to this, right? So say, see this voltage drop across your load in order to actually achieve what you want. Like say you want five volts across this load. The output from your transformer needs to be the output across this load plus the amount of voltage you need to get this forward biased. Um, I actually list an example below, so we'll cover that in a second, but hopefully this makes perfect sense to you. I just have the equation V out prime equals V out plus VF. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty simple. I, I'll we'll even get more clear in an example in a second. The last important equation I want to cover is. P in equals P out over um, this is some Greek letter. I don't know what it is. 
Um, but it stands for efficiency, right? So if you've taken thermodynamics or if you understand thermodynamics, you understand that the power input into a system has to equal the power output of a system. And I mean, this is still the case of our flyback converter. Now, the thing I'm talking about though is we're, we're, we wanna consider uh, like we'll call it usable power or power that actually does something that we want it to do because in a lot of cases, you'll have power that it gets dissipated as heat. It gets dissipated throughout other components in the circuit. It gets uh, like it gets um, lost in various ways due just due to just general efficiency losses, right? Say our transformer doesn't generate perfect magnetic fields and stuff like that. Um, so whenever you're designing your flyback converter, you have to understand that the amount of power that you need to input is is going to be greater, at least greater um, than I mean greater than or equal to, right? But in a perfect system, it's never going to be equal, it's, but it's going to be greater than or equal to the output power. Um, so here I get into an actual example for us to look at. So I have specified, and these things are, are, are givens, right? They are according to what I want based on the application, right? So I'm designing a five volt, one amp flyback converter that uses a, an output diode that has a forward voltage of 0 0.9 volts. The transformer in this converter has a primary winding value of 74 and a secondary winding value of 5. The efficiency of this converter is roughly 70%. So this is actually a pretty typical flyback converter that you might see if you just go look around. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure this is um, what a lot of iPhones will use for a charger. So if anyone, actually I think I have it right here. Uh, this right here is, everyone should be very familiar with what this is. Um, that's basically what this is um, specified as. Now it might not, it might be more than seventy percent efficient, and they might use might, they might use something different on their output. Their for the forward voltage of their output diode and the transformer rate, uh, windings might be different. But these are this is still a good example from stuff I've researched. So here, the first thing we want to do is calculate the actual output value that needs to come out of our transformer because that will affect our winding ratio and the duty cycle that we just previously talked about. So. Given you know our specified output of five volts and the forward voltage is zero point nine volts, we know five point nine volts is what our V out prime value is. So that's the output that needs to come out of our trans. Secondly, we know that the turns ratio is what this this quantity in S over NP is referred to as. Um, sometimes it's the other way around where it's NP to NS. But just understand that you know five over seventy four. It's simple math. We're engineers. We got it. So next thing we want to do is plug it into that initial equation that I listed, the very first one. Uh, so that's what this is, is this plugged into that first equation that I mentioned, which is V out equals V in times the winding ratio times this duty cycle, uh, this duty cycle term here. And in this case, we're solving for duty cycle. So here we do the basic math, right? And we get the value 0 0.514 equals D over one minus D, do some more basic algebra and we get 0.514 equals 1.514 D. Again, more basic algebra and we get 33.9% is the duty cycle. So this is basically a reflection of the value T on over T on plus T off. Um, I'm not actually sure if you can calculate what T on actually is from this. I, I didn't even think about the algebra, honestly, until now. Um, but there are like really complicated equations. I think I even have them here that are that you can actually calculate the uh, T on this T one is T on in this case. Um, but given I think these, this is way beyond the scope of what we're this video and what we're kind of trying to achieve here, which is we're going to try to we're trying to to, to uh, like scrape something together that even looks like a flyback converter, right? Because that's a huge feat of engineering if you can actually do that. So don't worry about doing it well, just worry about doing it, I think is, is a good motto to have for starting. So the next one, next thing we wanna talk about is the power input, right? So we wanna, I think, I don't know, it was very fascinating to me to understand like, because once you inter start interfacing with the wall, it's sort of like a black box. It's like a mystery of what exactly is going on when you plug stuff into the outlet. I don't, I, to be honest, I have no clue what's going on at those power distribution centers and what they're thinking, what they're seeing. But I do know what is happening as soon as it comes out of the wall, right? And, and that is that the wall outlet, um, based on this equation right here, so I have PN equals P out over 0 0.7, and we know our specified power is 5 watts with a 70% efficiency um, rating. 
we're going to need 7.142 watts from the wall. So I think that's, that, I don't know, that's, that's really fascinating for me to learn and understand. And I think it even takes a step further because I was really curious, um, even more so, like how much current are we drawing from the wall and stuff like that. So what I took it a step further and did was, you should be hopefully familiar with this equation that is power equals voltage times current. And so going back to, like I said, the thermodynamics, then if the powers are and the input and output are, are equal divided by the, the efficiency ratio, we can actually um, you know, figure out how much current is going in, into the primary side of our transformer, right? How much power is, how much current is being output from the, the outlet, right? Um, how much power is, how much current is coming from the wall? That's what I'm trying to, to figure out for us, right? So in the case of a 7.14 watt flyback converter, we know that our VN is 170 volts. Um, the reason for this is because when you rectify 120 volts RMS, you get 170 volts. And I say, this is assuming we're like in America at 120 volt outlets, okay? So, um, that, like, yeah, that's the assumption we're making here, right? So now, it, we, we basically have everything else accounted for. We know the, the right-hand side of the equation equals 7.14 because we already calculated that. Then we know the input voltage is 170. So all you do is divide across and we get an I input, an input current of roughly 42 milliamps. Um, what, what you can make of that number, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Um, maybe it sounds really low, maybe it doesn't. It makes sense from a power perspective. Um, I don't know, I thought it was really fascinating, but that's basically when you plug in one of these little white things and you're charging your iPhone, then that's basically what's happening. It's it's drawing uh, 42 milliamps from the wall. So um, I don't know. I, I thought it was was pretty fascinating. Um, so yeah, so that pretty much concludes everything I want to talk about in this video. Like I said, these are some of the more basic equations. If you took a glance or paused the video when I scrolled through this, like there's a lot more complicated ones. Um, but I, I, I don't think they're necessary for learning how to design one well, honestly. I think you can do just fine with just this for now, especially if you're designing your first flyback converter, which is what I want to get us to. Um, so that, that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to cover. Thanks so much if you made it to the end of the video. Drop a comment if you have, if you have any questions or anything. Also, I would love to take project requests. If you want, me, want to see me design an actual converter or something, then leave a comment down below and I will definitely um, take those requests. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.